my last day at work was this Friday. Lisbeth Halverson lost her research job at a Copenhagen-based institute in late July. She joins the 4.2 percent of Danes who are unemployed, a remarkably low number considering the EU average is 9.7 percent and the United States rate hovers above 9 percent. She knows she'll be well taken care of. Since I am now, now unemployed, I think I will get like, it's almost 70 percent of what I was paid when I was working. So it's, it's still pretty decent. I can still survive and still go on holidays. Denmark has one of the world's most generous welfare systems, funded by a high income tax rate of around 50 percent and a monthly insurance fee of $70. Here, the Constitution even guarantees the right to work and the right to support for the unemployed. But the financial crisis has forced governments in Europe and the United States to reassess how to support the unemployed. In Denmark, the government in June decided to change its famous flex security system by cutting its lavish unemployment benefits period from four years to two. So in that way, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I can, I'm, I can survive here for two years without getting a job, but I don't want to survive. I, I want a job so I can get some work experience and get some meaning in my life. Unlike in the United States, where we have seen a number of long-term unemployed forced out of their homes, even living in cars or tent cities, something like that could never happen here in Denmark. But Danes do pay a high price. Individual income taxes here are about 50 percent and above. But while many countries have turned to Denmark for clues on how to improve their own safety nets, the cost has proven too high. For seven years, I was Minister of Employment, and uh, we had many people from all over the world uh, coming here, um, studying the system. Uh, but when it came to the costs, the interest dropped. <laughs> now, to reduce costs, the government is focusing on getting people back to work quickly, and it has intensified job training and placement programs to reduce their time on unemployment. Danish studies have shown that the longer people collect benefits, the less likely they are to find work. Yeah. Ulrich Larsen lost his engineering job eight months ago. Every week, in return for his benefits, he must go online and declare that he is available for full-time work. He also must send out two job applications a week and meet with job counselors regularly. Two months ago, he was sent into a government program to get him back into the labor force. For me, it's been a, a course in job seeking and networking, all kinds of help, actually. It's been really good. Still, Mr. Larson and his Malaysian wife fear the recent cutbacks could have serious consequences for them. Number one wish right now, I mean, it's not even to have a kid, even though I really want that. The number one wish is to have any job. I mean, I have to convince myself not to maybe apply for a cleaning job because uh, they will hurt my uh, career as an engineer. And you too. Uh. Yeah. I spent seven years to be a biologist and now <laughs> I'm applying to clean offices. So we met um, three years ago. In uh, my university. In your university. So we quickly hit it off, I think. <laughs> they married and moved to Denmark, hoping to get jobs. But if Mr. Larson doesn't find work soon and ends up on welfare, Sri will lose her immigration permit, forcing a tough decision. I have to choose between welfare or her, and I choose her. <laughs>